Shalom, my friends, and welcome to From the Armory, where we search for words that we can use as weapons in the struggles of life. Today, we are going to be looking at one of my absolute most favorite books, The Pilgrim's Progress, in its original form, some reproductions and amplified versions, teaching aids, graphic novels, and some different things in between. So stay tuned, and we'll find weapons for the warfare of life. The book The Pilgrim's Progress, to me, has been so significant and so special that some months ago, during the courtship with my wife, she bestowed upon me this special gift. And this here is a... well, let's open it and find out. It comes in this nice leather case, and inside is this lovely uh, high-quality compass. And when I open it, there's the compass functionality, but then also there are these words which read, This hill though high, I covet to ascend, the difficulty will not me offend, for I perceive the way to life lies here. Come pluck up heart, let's neither faint nor fear, better though difficult the right way to go, than wrong though easy where the end is well. When we encounter, well, first of all, when we seek to follow God, say this, this compass had special properties that pointed it, pointed me in the, in the direction of God's will, and I endeavor to go in that path, that narrow path. If I, in my journey, encounter difficulty, and that, that there's an incline, a hill difficulty, or a difficult hill on that narrow way, Ought I to just go to the left or right to destruction or death because the, the path to destruction or death is smoother, softer, less of an incline? Absolutely not. But I can, as Christian, the character in Pilgrim's Progress did, choose to say these words in response to difficulty. I can use these very words as a weapon in the struggles of life. These here words, um, you can find them right here in this book. I have the page marked in the back on page 48. You can see the story of a uh, Christian going on the hill difficulty. This version has some nice old artwork. I think it is where my my take, haggis. No? Well, page 48. But you see that this story is about a character named Christian, and it's an allegory or a parable of the Christian life. So, in order to summarize some about this book, I want to emphasize <coughs> some points made by a evangelist named Carlton Knott. Carl... Carlton, as you'd expect it to be spelled, not spelled K-N-O-T-T. -T. And he does a great series through, from which I'm going to derive some notes and points that he very, very effectively summarized. The book The Pilgrim's Progress was written by John Bunyan. He was born in 1628 in Elstow, England, during the Dark Ages, which was a period that lasted from 538 AD to 1798. He was born in great poverty. His, uh, his grandfather, after his death, death, left his father six pence or six pennies 
they were so poor, and his father was a brazier or tinker, someone who like makes pots and pans and tea kettles and that kind of thing. And as was the custom, John Bunyan also learned this trade because school for the poor was just watching your dad at work, which honestly is a way better education than most people get in public school these days. If people were just able to watch their dad at work and help him with those things. So Bunyan himself says this, my descent was of low and inconsiderable generation, my father's house being of that rank that is meanest and most despised of all the families in the land. In the, he has a book called Grace Abounding, the Chief of Sinners, which actually is in these editions here. This is both, both of these contain everything that John Bunyan ever wrote. And in that book, we can read about his life. And he tells of his life that he was vulgar. He was the most profane person around. He was filled with just, just wickedness. And out of the abundance of his heart filled with wickedness, the, uh, that came out. And even the local prostitutes were so, uh, move, so in, so notice, they, they noticed his uh, profanity so much that they were, uh, dis they knew that was, they d discussed his reputation in that way. Uh, on a particular day, uh, John Bunyan was playing a game called Tip Cat which is kind of like baseball. And in that game, he was playing and he heard a voice that said, will you leave your sins and go to heaven or have your sins and go to hell? And it was that instant that was a real critical moment for him. And his life was never quite the same. He happened to marry a wife who was also poor, so much so that she, they said, he says of their marriage that when they got married, they didn't even have a spoon between them. But what they did have was the inheritance that her father had given him, her, given her and his wife. And what that was, was two books, one called The Practice of Piety and another called The Plain Man's Pathway to Heaven. I don't have The Plain Man's Pathway to Heaven here, but this is one that we have available in the store, and we also sell Plain Man's Pathway to Heaven. Um, but these two books were by Puritan authors, and Bunyan became a Puritan as he uh, became, when he became a Christian, and uh, they're awesome books. I've read them cover to cover. I highly recommend them. Um, so Bunyan, uh, lived in the era around, the relevant era was the 1620s into the 50s and beyond. And in 1620, the Pilgrims came to America. It was also the era in which the Pilgrims protesting against the Church of England were in their protesting. And they call themselves Puritan, endeavoring to keep a pure, like, allegiance to the Bible. It was illegal to not use, to do anything but have a licensed preacher use the Book of Common Prayer and preach state-approved sermons. There was a union between church and state. Church of England separated because the king wanted a divorce. Pope wouldn't give him one, so he's like, fine, I'll start my own church where I can get a divorce. And that's a summer of simplification. But anyway, the king was like the Pope of England. And he started the Episcopal Church or the Church of England, the Anglican Church. There's three different names. So, you know, this is the era of Shakespeare and so forth. And Bunyan received no real formal education, but he was able just by reading and diligent study to master the English language. He, uh, in 1649, he got married. However, in 1655, his wife died leaving him with four small children, one of which was blind. He remarried after his wife died in 1659. And then in, he was in prison at age 32 in, from, at 16 in 1660. 
So at the time, as I said, it was illegal to preach without a license. So why did John Bunyan not just get a license to preach if he was compelled to preach after his conversion? Well, he noticed that everyone who preached with a license did not preach with power. So it was his conviction to just preach without a license and risk imprisonment or risk uh, being you know, considered a criminal, breaker of the law. And you see, he had the same sort of spirit as Daniel, who when it was made illegal to pray, Daniel didn't stop praying. When it was made illegal to preach, Bunyan didn't stop preaching. So he was sentenced with 12 years in prison because, or sentenced with a period in prison, and he ended up spending 12 years. The reason being because he knew he was going, he, he heard word that they were likely going to try to arrest him at his next sermon. And he gets up to that, preach that sermon with the guards there. And they they're like, if you begin to preach, or if you begin to pray or something like that, we will arrest you and you will go to jail. And the very moment he began to pray, or following the moments he began to pray, he was, you know, confronted by the guards or the, the officials who took him to jail. And there in jail, he made shoelaces to support his family while also having access to some writing implements where he wrote his books. Uh, he wrote Pilgrim's Progress whilst in jail. So, it said that several other Christian friends also came to the aid of his family so they did not starve while he was in prison. So the book was written in Bedford Jail. And ultimately, John Bunyan died in 1688 at the age of 60. And, uh, he wrote many other books, as you can see. These are the works. These books contain everything he wrote. There are some very influential Christian men who had, and women who had some very interesting things to say about this book. Charles Spurgeon said that he, it was his favorite book. He said that he read the Pilgrim's Progress, one, his favorite book apart from the Bible. He said that he read the Pilgrim's Progress over 100 times. And he actually wrote a book called Around the Wicked Gate, and also another book called P Pictures from Pilgrim's Progress. And they are both very great, good books that I um, recommend. Around the Wicked Gate is more of a concept derived from the Pilgrim's Progress, or referencing Pilgrim's Progress in a book about Pilgrim's Progress itself. Um, there's a woman named Ellen G. White who wrote some very interesting things. She writes of retaining to Bunyan and Pilgrim's Progress. She wrote in Christ's Object Lessons, page 235, that in human hearts today, a, as great a transformation may be wrought as has ever been wrought in generations past. John Bunyan was redeemed from profanity and reveling. John Newton from slave dealing to proclaim an, un, an uplifted savior, a Bunyan and a Newton, may be redeemed from among men today. In Great Controversy, another book by Ellen White, she writes, Again, as in apostolic days, persecution turned out to the furtherance of the gospel. In a loathsome dungeon crowded with profligates and felons, John Bunyan breathed the very atmosphere of heaven, and there he wrote his wonderful allegory of the pilgrim's journey from the land of destruction to the celestial city. For 200 years, this was written in 1800, so she's saying 200 years since 1600s. For 200 years, that voice from Bedford Jail has spoken with thrilling power to the hearts of men. Bunyan's Pilgrim's Progress and Grace Abounding to the Chief of Sinners, which is in here, that's his autobiography, have guided many feet into the path of life. A final quote from her uh, in an article from the, uh, a publication called The Review and Herald from May 30th, 1912, in the 11th paragraph. She writes, she wrote, Success in the winning of souls does not depend upon age or circumstances, but upon the love 
that one has for others. Consider John Bunyan imprisoned in the Bedford jail. His enemies think they have placed him where his work for others must cease. But not so. He's not idle. The love for souls continues to burn within him, and from the loathsome dungeon there is sent forth a light that has shown to all parts of the civilized world. There he wrote the wonderful allegory of the pilgrim's journey from the land of destruction to the celestial city. This book, The Pilgrim's Progress, portrays the Christian life so accurately and presents the love of Christ so attractively that through its instrumentality, hundreds and thousands have been converted. Are you converted? Am I converted? Perhaps if we read these books, The Pilgrim's Progress, we may yet be converted if we have not already been. Some final facts about this book. Next to the Bible, many believe this to be the greatest book ever written. Some people might call it the Bible with pictures. It is very practical in nature. This book describes the Christian traveling between two worlds, the city of destruction, this world we live in, to the celestial city where he is heading. The book was written in the form of an allegory, story or poem, or picture which can be interpreted to reveal hidden meaning, typically a moral one. It has been translated into 198 languages and dialects, and it sets contrast between the genuine and the false Christian. Therefore, in this book, this book has no appeal to the worldly Christian. The reality of the characters in this book and their application that they can serve to our lives is incredible. You may not experience everything that the characters in this book experience. But you will find in you in this book someone who is like you in a certain moment in life. Something I find interesting in uh, we'll we'll take a look at this this edition here and. We have this quote here, which is from Hosea 12.10. We have this part here, which is from Hosea 12.10, where it is written, I have used similitudes. And here you can see on the full page that this is the full title, The Pilgrim's Progress from This World to That Which Is to Come, delivered under the similitude of a dream, wherein is discovered the manner of his, his setting out his dangerous journey, and the arrival at the desired country. So, this, uh, this is probably my favorite edition to recommend to someone. Um, the prices vary depending on condition and uh, just access to the book at different times as we get more in stock and we go through them. Um, but if you're willing to invest like 50 to $80 in a really high quality edition. Um, both of these are great options. Um, they're both from Franklin Library and they're great. Um, these here are um, editions of Bunyan's works. These are from 1870. Um, the little book in that says, this book is from the Horde of uh, like Janet Williams, read thoroughly and handle carefully, return promptly. So someone from way back had a little library, I guess. Um, but this book contains everything that Bunyan wrote, as well as this one here. This one has the uh, these metal clamps. And if you're interested in any edition of the Pilgrim's Progress, including these very... Um, elaborate ones, um, I just comment below or contact us. Uh, this is actually a picture of 
Christian um, visiting Vanity Fair. And you might that might sound familiar to you because Vanity Fair is a famous website, magazine, and um, even a napkin and plate brand. Or the napkins, anyways. And uh, this Vanity Fair, it comes from the book Pilgrim's Progress. And Vanity, you know, all things Vanity, things that fade away, things like pleasures and things of this world. Um, there's a city called Vanity, and, and it's built right, and it says Satan, a long time ago, saw the narrow way that Christians have to follow. And he built the city of Vanity right next to it, and then built Vanity Fair all around the path, something like that. And it's meant to be, symbolize that every day of our lives, we're passing through this world and we have to pass through vanity all around us, worldly things, and persevere to the other side. So let's go over a few of the other options and, or of other publications people have made. These three here, this amplified version of part one, here's part two, and this coloring book are all from the Orion's Gate ministry. Um, this uh, brother, he, I think the story is that he was telling to his family, reading it aloud and amplifying it, making it more palatable for an audio version. And eventually he just was like, why don't I record it? And then once he recorded the audio version, he's like, why don't I write it down and make it a nice book? So he did that with the first and second part. You have Christian's journey and then you have his wife and children and some friends journey on the pathway. And um, this Again, this is a there's hardcover of the first one and then paperback of both. And it has some nice illustrations. This is one of my favorite scenes. It's Help, um, the character named Help, or Helpful, helping Christian out of the slough of despond. And then same thing here. Some illustrations, I believe, in here. Yep. Where is that going? There we go. And you see the woman and her children on the journey. And then the coloring book, it goes right along with the CDs. So if you have the CDs, you can go disc one, track 12, and it shows you the timer on like when this scene happens. So like you can listen right along with the story as a family and your child or the children can both, then it can all have a book to color. So those are the Orion's Gate publications. These here are from Memoir Press. Yeah. These are Dangerous Journey, The Story of Pilgrim's Progress. Um, these are a student study guide and a teacher study guide. Goes through quotations, meaning, and so forth. And it comes with this whole thing. This is a whole, actually, this, this is a separate product, but it's related. It looks like it might be together. But there's actually this set, which is a Pilgrim's Progress, with a forward by Jen Ham, Ken Ham, illustrated and annotated. And um, you buy these, these come together, and there's a CD that it comes. So there's, it says, um, there's some various things included in the CD. But this is a whole, like, homeschool set for Pilgrim's Progress. Um, there was the Pilgrim's Progress animated movie. I have mixed feelings about it, but it's interesting. And this was a book. It's very nice. Um, but this is a book that goes over the story of Pilgrim's Progress with with an, with some some clips from the anime the um, some animation used. That's available for those interested. Um, and then. Finally, we have some graphic novels. This one comes from Kingstone Comics. Um, it looks kind of like an anime almost style. Um, this is part two of two, um, or at least volume two. I'm not sure how many volumes there are. Um, but yes, this is something we have available to those interested. We also have other Bible comics. There's a whole Kingstone version of the Bible and comic. Um, out of all the graphic novels, this one here is my favorite. This is done by my friend Stephen Moore. Some really incredible art. My favorite art here is probably... Where is it? There's the lion. 
Um, it's one of my favorite scenes. He has to walk by faith between the lions. And then there's help is just in the beginning. This is also my favorite scene. You have help helping him out of the slough. He cries for help. His hand help grabs him, and then help is a light unto his path and leaves him with a light um, with the word the light to the uh, narrow gate that he uh, needs to get into. Into so there's this is actually three volumes in one. So it's sort of like three books for the price of one. Uh, so there's that. Marvel did a um, Pilgrim's Progress adaptation. Yeah, it sounds crazy to think that Marvel Comics did a Pilgrim's Progress adaptation, but they did. Um, it's here. Um, again, I have mixed feelings about it, but it's there's some good, some value. And honestly, if someone reads this, and they would never read this, then that's good. <laughs> that's very good. And this one, this last one, it's probably the most interesting, <laughs> but not my most favorite. Um, this man, Ralph Sanders, from Whistle Key, with Whistle Key Books, he made this black and white version of Pilgrim's Progress where Christian's on a motorcycle. And it's set like sort of like in the present slash dystopian future. And you have Destruction City Power Co. Um, it's just very, very intriguing. I think he these are all etchings, like those black scratch boards. I think that's what this is. But you see like you maybe that's Austin and Impliable chasing him. No, that's maybe that's Apollyon or one of the demons chasing him down. Um you see Lot's wife is like portrayed as a um, like circus attraction, like oddity that you can see on the a truck side, truck stop side road. Anyway, it's really interesting. Um, it's not for everyone, but it's intriguing. So with that, we'll, uh, we'll just say that uh, all of these things we hope to be available at openthearmory.org. Um, pray for the website, it's getting redone. And then there's also Orionsgate.org, um, where you can get the Orionsgate products. And um, perhaps you can, we can use a, uh, a, if you use the code, um, we can maybe make a coupon code or something if I talk to him, where um, we can get a coupon. So look in the description um, and keep an eye out for that. There might be a coupon code that you can use. Um, for a small discount um, on ryansgate.org, but you can also just go to openthearmor.org and get them or comment in below and we can just uh, do it directly. So I cannot really recommend this book enough. Clearly I'm quite enthusiastic about the book, um, if it's not obvious from my collection, but it's for good reason. Uh, I grew up on Lord of the Rings and there's definitely some Christian themes in Lord of the Rings uh, a paraphrase of what Tolkien said is that the first time he wrote it, it was Christian by accident. The second time he revised it, it was Christian on purpose. So, like, I was fascinated by that sort of thing, but this is better. This is so much better. And it's just, there's so much Bible. They say of John Bunyan that if you poked him, he'd bleed Bible. And... Obviously, it's kind of a exaggeration joke kind of thing, but, you know, it's, there's something to behind, there's some truth behind every joke, you know, there's some reason people say that, and um, it's just saturated with scripture, this book, and I highly recommend it. This is my favorite. If you're interested in having a personal family edition, it's the original text, this edition, or one of these 1870 ones is a good option. Um, if you're interested in either of those, let me know. Um, but these two are my recommendation for families. This has everything Bunyan wrote. This has everything. This has, uh, this is just, just the book Pilgrim's Progress Part 1 and 2. And then the Orion's Gate Coloring Book Parts 1 and 2 Amplified Versions are probably the best to read aloud as a family. They're meant to be faithful to the original text, but made adjustments for um, just 
making minor improvements here and there if possible and also just making it more palatable to the ear more earable i guess and uh yeah uh, jim Pappas did a great job please pray for the open the army.org website and the open orion's gate website we're trying to get them up we um there's a sample of the audiobook by orion's gate on open the army.org you can hopefully see that in the link below or in the playlist below um but yeah thank you um so much for watching. Remember, the Bible is the armory where we may equip for the struggle. Shalom, my friends.